Welcome YouTubers, my name's Ads, and today we are going through a beginner's guide to Might and Magic Chess Royale. Now if you're here, it's likely you're experiencing the same thing a lot of players do when starting out. You're overwhelmed by information, unsure what it all means, and, and not sure what to focus on to improve your gameplay. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share my learning process. I'll break down the game and, and cover three key areas of the game to put you on the right path to mastering Chess Royale. Now, if you find this video helpful and useful, please give it a like. Tell me some of your Chess Royale stories in the comments section down below. And if you want to see some more Chess Royale videos, please hit that subscribe button so you get notified when I post some of my highlight videos. I also stream Chess Royale live on Twitch where I talk through my thought processes and, and strategies. Link to the channel is in the description down below, but, but that's enough about me. Let's get started. A beginner's guide to Might and Magic Chess Royale. All right, so by now you've probably played a handful of games of Chess Royale and you're, you're trying to work out how everything sort of fits together. What the units do, what hit, what impact heroes have, how, why your opponent's doing certain things, what's a synergy, what's, what's, how do you level? I mean, there's all sorts of information available to you, but, but you need to sort of break it down one step at a time. And that's why before we go into the three key areas that I think are, are good to focus on, I'm going to give you guys some insight as to what I did from uh, when I first saw a home screen with all of this information on it. Now, I'm not going to go and click on every button, but before we hit that, that fight button over here, we're going to first port of call is the guide. Now, there's units, synergies, instructions. I reckon instructions should probably be first, but anyway... If you go through all this stuff, the basics of the game, how to recruit, how to play, what the heroes do, co how combat works, all the MISC stuff, very comprehensive and a fantastic point to, uh, to start your journey out. Now, I have uh, what I would call the mindset tip, and that is to be curious. Explore the game, ask lots of questions, and really immerse yourself in the gaming experience. I, I really am a huge supporter of trying new things, seeing how interactions work, and, and sort of get the hands-on experience in order to, to gauge on what works, what doesn't work, effectively using the grind when you start the game as, as part of the learning experience. It's a two birds and one stone philosophy. Uh, Master Yoda, I believe in in one of the more recent Star Wars movies said a great teacher failure can be. Uh, I'm in full support of that. I'm also in support of uh, breaking a few eggs to make an omelette. So let's jump back into the guide and let's look at units, which is our number one, our number one focus point, having an understanding of what units are. Very simple. These are what we're going to use through the game understanding that you've got key stats like your hit points, damage, damage per second. But the key things we're going to take away here in the base stats before we go too deep, and we're not going to cover it all, is let's look at a Battle Dwarf, Fortress Guardian. Now we look at these symbols, and these are going to lead on to number two, but these synergy def uh, defining traits uh, are very important and we will discuss them in part two. So knowing what uh, allegiance or how these units are aligned is important, but underneath the name Battle Dwarf, not even concerned about if it's a one star, a two star, or a three star, we understand that obviously as you level the unit up, it gets bigger, but it's a tank. So this leads us into what role units play in your composition. A tank is obviously a someone that is designed to take damage. So increased armor, magic resistance, things like that. The damage output is obviously going to be a factor when it comes to combat, but the attack type as well. So you'll notice that some units have a physical attack, some of them have a magical attack. Understanding where in the composition this unit fits or a unit fits is, is very important. So we'll go to the druid. This is a ranged unit 
and it has a magical attack type. So you need to be mindful if it's a ranged unit, does it really need to go on the front line? If, uh, if the unit is a healer, does it need to go on the front line? Probably not. And we'll jump straight into some gameplay footage where you can see that I'm I'm positioning my, my units around each other with the goal of putting my tank in the front to make sure they, they take the brunt of the opponent's attack. Also protecting my, my ranger or my archery unit. So we'll go back... And, and make sure that the hunter mecha the hunter is protected so he gets his buff. We have the healers down the back to, to protect and surround people to be support. And we also, in some instances, drop a tank back so that if units do jump the front line, that there's a tank there to draw the aggro away from those uh, vulnerable units, I guess we'll say. So going through, watching the gameplay, you'll notice that there is a positioning. Positioning is a very a key aspect and making sure you're recruiting enough of the right units in the right roles. The other thing that comes down to your composition is also what synergies. So you'll notice in this, in this gameplay, I've got a lot of Sylvan units and I'm trying to activate the Sylvan synergy. So we'll see, yeah, and you'll notice that I do put a big focus in, in the the gameplay that you're seeing on making sure I'm aligning my synergies to get the maximum, maximum out of my units. Because all we do when we go into a unit, and we'll go back quickly here to, to one of the units, the Dryad. These are stats. These are base stats. And this is going to lead into number two. So the base stats are where we start from. But you'll notice that Dryad being a Sylvan, if we assemble a Sylvan composition a predominantly sylvan they don't all have to be sylvan then we're really focused on gaining a synergy bonus and before we jump into number two just to, to, to debrief units number one understand the base stats and that they are just that base stats they can be modified know the role that your your unit plays in a composition whether it's a healer or a support if it's ranged melee uh, if it's a tank or DPS, know what the role is and make the deci make decisions to put your composition together to create a balance within those roles. Then, obviously, there's the positioning, and that's that can vary from battle to battle, from composition to composition. So it's something that, once again, we take that be curious mindset, try different things, and get those units into different positions to see how they work and interact together. And last but not least with units, understand their synergy. This will lead to part two, or key focus point number two, heroes and synergies. Now, since we've been talking about Sylvans, we'll use Sylvan as an example. We are back in the guide section here where it outlines all of the synergies. Now, a lot of new players uh, fail to realize just how important your hero and synergies are for this game. So let's let's take a look firstly at synergies because they're the easy one. It's very simple. If you have, and we'll use Sylvan as an example, every, as you'll be able to see, every, every synergy has different units that are associated Units have dual synergies. So this is another thing to consider when you're putting together your, your squad, when you're actually building a composition, uh, what synergies they possess and how well they work with one another. But we'll, we'll jump back into Sylvans. Okay, when you have three Sylvan units on the battlefield, when they're hurt, Sylvans have a 15% chance to deal 135 damage to every nearby foe. Right, that, that means that units that are hitting it get hurt back. A very, uh, I find it a very powerful synergy. Other people use other units and other synergies and will explain the reasoning behind utilizing different synergies as we progress into heroes. But synergies are really simple. Go through them all, have a read, see what you like best, and then you can start planning what units you'd like to, to try and buy or what you'd like to build towards. Now, there's a difference, as we said, with the Sylvan one as well. There's two tiers 
for a lot of these synergies. Some of them only have the one tier, which is Dragon at this stage in Colossus. As I said, the game keeps evolving. These might change over time, but the principle remains the same. Let's go into Sylvans. Three units, 15% chance. If you have all six Sylvan units, you have a 25% chance to deal extra damage to your nearby foes. Now, that might not sound like an, a, a lot, but if you're if you've got a chance of dealing additional damage in an evenly placed match where your opponent doesn't have synergies, you have a distinct advantage. Having every possible additional advantage is obviously going to put you in better stead as you progress through the game and later in single games as well as at higher levels. Anyway, synergies, important. Make sure you consider them. Don't over-focus on them. If the lobby, if the shop isn't offering you the units, sometimes you actually have to adapt on the fly, buy different units with other units in mind. But let's not get too tied up in things. Let's jump into heroes, which is probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest impacts of the game. Now, there's three different types of heroes. We have Uncommon, which are the green ones. We have the rare heroes, which are blue. And we have the purple ones, which are epic. Now, obviously, as with units, uh, the the heroes uh, give you better, uh, better things if they're a, a higher level. Or they may have a more powerful hero ability. Or a battle power, sorry. So let's take a look at Gem. She's an uncommon hero. Starts with an uncommon unit and has a favored unit of a druid. So that means if you're going Sylvan and you have Gem as your active hero, your Sylvan units are definitely going to be preferred to be recruiting. The reason for this is in addition to their stats giving you a, a buff to, to base stats. So before we go to the synergy boost, if you have a higher level hero, you get a bigger buff to your units. That's right, the base stats are modified by the active hero. And when I say active hero, that is the one that's currently battling. So if you've got a lineup of three, the two that aren't battling or the ones that are dead do not impact the board. Only the active hero impacts the board. So when you're selecting your squad of three heroes, you've got to be mindful of what the battle power is what the level is with attack, magic, and defense stats because they all impact your units differently. With attack increasing physical damage dealt and magic increasing the magical damage dealt. So your units will be affected by different numbers or different stats on the heroes you're using as you progress. If you lose a fight and change heroes, your stats on your units may change with it. So it's something to be mindful of if you have a low level hero with an amazing battle power, but low stats, your actual units may not, may be weaker with the stronger battle power or vice versa. The battle power might be that good that even though your units have reduced in power level, the battle power gets you through. And it's, it's a consideration with every game. Let's now jump in to synergy boost. So every hero has a synergy boost. It has an affiliation with a particular synergy. In this case, we're sticking with the Sylvan theme. Gem, when she's active on the battlefield, she gives a 20% damage and HP boost to your Sylvan units. Now this boost is going to be vital in, especially when you're matching up against heroes of a slightly higher level, when you're in a very evenly poised game, if you've got your Sylvan Synergy going and you've got a Sylvan Hero, your units are 20% better. Now that can be a huge change and a huge difference between level 4, 15 gem facing off against level 17 Ludmilla. Even though they're a higher level, they have higher stats, your stats are boosted by 20% if they're not using their synergy. So another consideration, remember that your units have base stats. 
And I'm, I'm going to harp on this because a lot of people lose fights during a game and say, why did I lose that? Well, because all of your units on the battlefield don't have a synergy boost active, whereas your opponent has got all of their synergy boosted units active. They could be a higher level, they could have better stats, and you can lose games if you've got low attack and focused on magic units. You can see how this gets really, really convoluted and confusing quickly. But the quicker you understand where the bonuses are coming from, the quicker you can make the adjustment to understanding what kind of units you prefer in your composition. So don't be afraid to experiment with different unit types that share traits that you want to work with the heroes you choose. Now you don't have to choose Gem and a bunch of Sylvans to play Sylvans, but you get a boost from having those heroes active. To give you another example, we'll go to Sephiroth. I don't predominantly play dungeon units, but I really like the untamed ability when she's active. That said, I may not want her third, I might want her second. Having, having hero order and working that, start, that stuff out is really part of the challenge of figuring out how both the units and the heroes work together. My biggest bit of advice here would be understand how the hero level impacts your units. Because if there's no synergy boost and you're getting physical attack units and you've got a high magic character, you're not going to get the bonuses you need in those 50-50 matchups. You're going to be put at a disadvantage. And I'm not saying don't buy physical attack units. I'm saying be mindful that they may be weaker if you're using the wrong hero. So it's a lot to take in. And as I said, make some omelets, break them eggs, check it out, try it out. Just experiment. Experiment with what you think might work. Because just because a unit at its base level or its power looks amazing, if it doesn't synergize with the hero you're using, you might struggle in those games where your opponent has got full synergy and using a matching synergy hero. Now, on that, the way that your opponents are, are, are matched up is actually dictated by, from, from what I can say at this stage of the matchmaking process, it's actually based on your aggregate hero level. So you will get paired up against light, similarly leveled heroes until you hit about seven or 8,000 trophies. Once you reach that peak, then you may start getting matched up against higher end players purely because there's less players to pair against and, and, it, and it can prove there, there are humps especially at the when you get to that point where you have a synergy or you don't have a synergy boost and they do if they're a level higher they may have one also with the favored units i've come across it where i'm using heroes that don't don't have their favored unit yet yet i'm facing opponents that do have it that can put you at a disadvantage and that's one of those skill humps that you really need to uh to get through and maybe reconsider your hero selection make some adjustments to your style of play and play around with it. You're not going to win every game and not every battle is going to go the way you think it's going to go. But as long as you have that understanding of what might impact a fight, you put yourself in a much better position when it comes to constructing a composition. So in summary, let's have a look at what heroes do. You get three heroes. The active hero impacts your units uh, directly your average hero level dictates your opponent's hero level and what heroes you're matched up against. Your, you also get a starting unit. Epics tend to have a rare unit provided with them, whereas the rare and uncommons tend to have common or uncommon units. Your battle power is a consideration. Some are better than others. At present, Untamed is completely and utterly busted and probably needs a nerf, so by the time you guys see this video, you never know. This hero power may have changed. Your heroes also have a synergy boost, and this needs to be considered very, very carefully when choosing units. You don't have to get those units, but they definitely look better on the battlefield, and when you're playing through the game, and you have a 20% buff to specific units, 
that can be the difference between winning and losing a critical fight. The other thing to consider, as we talked earlier, is synergies themselves. Make sure you do yourself a favor and go through all of the synergies. Understand how different synergies work, what they do, and how they are gonna impact the game. Can't stress it enough. Make sure you are, you are considering all of these factors when you are assembling a team and getting ready to get out there and fight. Now that I've gone through all that, let's move on to number three, third area of focus, and that is the economy and leveling. All of the extra stuff, and what we'll do is we'll also add a bonus bit of content uh, once we go through those, and that is the data we get between rounds because I'm sure everybody loves analyzing data. We are gonna hit this big fight button and we are gonna go and play through a game right now. Let's hope that, uh, let, let's just hope that this isn't uh, a really bad example and I don't finish 100th. Uh, it's a new patch, so things might not go according to plan. I think I've actually left Sephiroth in my lineup, which is not common. But let's talk about the leveling process. So at level three to four, it only takes two XP to level up. So what I what I do in this situation is I would actually sell the troglodyte. Um, I could have had the synergy, but on round one, I am opting not to. I am gonna level up one XP because that means at the start of next turn when I decide to flip it. Okay, so off the bat, we are playing against someone that is a level higher, which is effectively three levels higher. Let's hope they don't have a full start with their max units. And look, these things do happen. The Dryad and the Ranger. There's an example of synergy at work. My level five Galu versus their level six was successful because I had my synergies activated. Now, after this, after this little turn, I'll give you guys a sneak peek at this. There's a board of info. There's a lot of info to go in, and we'll go through that in a sec. Let's jump into the next round. And you'll notice I've gone up by spending that two gold. I'm now at level four and can have an additional unit on the battlefield. I also have a higher chance of getting, or a chance now of getting an epic unit which I've hit. So, contrary to what I did previously, I am going to grab, and this is a little bit different because it's a new patch for me, but the Troglodyte has synergy with the, dry, uh, the Dryad. And the Medusa has synergy with the Troglodyte. I could have gone Sylvan, but I've activated my dungeon bonus. And it cost me, and it cost me. There we go, trying to make a case in point. Now you'll notice the way I'm leveling here. I didn't actually invest any gold into leveling because it would have cost me six gold that turn to do it and I wouldn't have been able to buy a unit. Instead, I bought a couple of units and, and basically consolidated my position. Now we get the extra one, it's gonna cost us four gold to go up to level five. The question is, is it worth it? I'm gonna say yes, because by adding the Druid to this squad, I've re-locked in my Sylvan Synergy. I don't have a tank as yet, I have five gold to spend. I'm gonna triple a unit and I am going to stay here because the Green Dragon is another epic unit that I certainly want. Actually, I can sell my sell my Druid, buy the Green Dragon. And the game just automatically did stuff. Explaining things uh, doesn't always give sufficient time in such a quick game, does it? 
Okay, so a level 8 Sephiroth versus a level... So effectively level 16 versus level 15, and I won that convincingly. That is due to my, my Sylvan boost. And due to me starting to compose a lineup that works well with my hero. So this is where the leveling strategy... I'm trying to use the gold that I have. You'll notice I spend everything. There's not generally a reason. Now, six gold to level with no units on the bench probably isn't the smartest thing. Um, I'm going to grab a Lamassu and a pair of... Now, do I get the pair? Because I can't put the pair on the board. This is where you ask yourself the question, is it better me spending this four gold to put me at level at level six next turn i would say yes i'm playing against a level 18 hero and i'm also going to switch out uh, i didn't get the green, green dragon in the middle too much explaining i also should have considered the fact that my favored unit now is the druid so i may not have wanted to sell that druid now this hero is three levels above me And what you're seeing is that my units are holding their own. The only thing I'm missing at the moment is a tank. And that is what I need to look for. Now, because that's a quick look between rounds, I'm not going to go through all of those numbers that I just showed you quickly, but we'll stick on this leveling path. We'll grab the the Lamassu, and now we can level, giving ourselves a better chance at getting better units. Now, yeah, it's gonna cost us a lot of gold to level. We're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna merge the Dryad. We are then going to play our Lamassu in the front. And you'll get an idea of where the game thinks you should be putting units by when they're on the bench. It's not always the right place. Now, we're going to swap that Troglodyte and Green Dragon so we don't screw up again. Level 18. Once again, we've got a hero, and sometimes we're just going to get bashed by a hero that's three levels higher. But by, by adding that 20% boost that our hero, our hero gives, we really stand a good chance in fighting an opponent that hasn't got their full synergies active or isn't tailored to their hero as much. Okay, so we've got a couple of seconds here. You can actually see who's got how many two star, how many players have got two star units, how many's got the most synergies. You'll notice I'm currently leading on active synergies, and that's definitely put me in dark, uh, in, in in good stead. I guess the word would be. All right, so now we have a tank. That treant is a tank. We're missing our art, our ranger. Synergy. Now, this is where we give careful consideration to the synergies we don't have, the synergies we want. You'll also notice that I haven't actually spent any money on spells. And, and while we're doing this, I'll give you my opinion on spells. My opinion on spells is they are a support mechanism and should never be the first priority for your gold. It's a, if you've got the extra, maybe use it. Uh, but all in all, your money is better spent early game while you're consolidating on really establishing a composition. Okay, so let's go back to this. I have zero spells, I'm at the bottom. There are 19 players with two spells. Another person's got the same synergies as I do. And then you can see how much gold people are stockpiling, and that's probably not the most relevant of stats. There we go. We'll grab our tank, which we can put on the battlefield straight away. Now the question is, do we sell our troglodyte and remove our dungeon strategy? We want the Mundo. 
Now, we can't place an extra unit on the field unless we sell one, so... The other question is, do we sell the Ranger to put the Mundo out? I'm going to do that because we don't have Archer... We don't have that synergy active. And the Mundo is a stronger, uh, a stronger unit. Now we come up against Untamed, which, I, as I said earlier, is completely busted. We could very well lose this fight because the Troglodyte can evade everything. We didn't. We got there. And that was another equivalent of a level 18 hero. So you see the impact of uh, synergies, but let's keep back to the economy side of things and the leveling and the spells. You'll notice that as we get up to like level 5 and 6, I'm not looking at spending too much gold at level 7 at the start. There's no point in spending 8 gold here to get an 8th unit on. But once it gets closer, then you make that decision. Now, what do we... We could take the Fire Giant to get our Colossus. Not going to do that at this stage. We are going to pair the Dragon. We're going to merge... Merge our tank, and we are going to buy a Lich. At which point we're going to consider the Troglodyte as redundant. But it is, it's a big thing on focusing. I mean, Dragon WB over here has actually considered this. Level 8 would mean it's a level 16 compared to an uncommon. Once again, my opponent is slightly stronger than me, but my synergies are really coming to the forefront. Giving a 20% uh, boost to three of my more important units, especially now they're two-star units, very important. Okay, so now we need six gold to get to level eight. We have another unit that we've got a, a, an option to place on the field here. So I'm actually going to level. And we're going to play the Lich. All right, so now you'll notice we currently have six synergies active. Level six Sandro is not going to be easy. And we are going to roll and see if we can start tripling. Now we could buy the Behemoth. Or we could buy a tree and hope we can triple triple it. I, don't, I doubt that's the option. But as you can see, we're actually we're actually competing quite well because we're we're utilizing a hero that has a a favorable composition. His level's now coming to the fore. But still not enough. You'll notice my Green Dragon and Mundo, which are my Sylvan units, surviving through that combat. Okay, let's have a quick look in here. The last one is XP leader. So you can see how many players in that last column are at what level. You can see if you're behind. You can see how far you are behind. And you can also see how much leveling has sort of been done in between. Now, we're at late game. We're in a good position with our heroes. We're coming up against Catherine. And there's no, there's no Haven active. So I'm going to spend all 8 gold and go to 9. We're going to get another tank. We want to get, actually, we probably want to put the Troglodyte up so we can get the Medusa in around our dragon. Our green dragon is going to give everybody 40 mana. But I hope you can see from, from this combat anyway that by aligning myself with certain synergies, I'm... I'm giving my hero the best possible chance to to combat my rival. Now, if they've got a level 7 Sandro, which is effectively a level 21, yes, there's going to be a, va a vast different in difference in stats. But at least I'm giving myself a fighting chance by maximizing my synergies, by maximizing my synergy boost. And the one thing I guess I didn't do is I sold that druid early and didn't 
Here we go. The Mundo is looking a whole lot stronger. All right. Now, at this point in the game, I need to stay here because I need that Medusa. Now, we're a fair way off 10, so let's see. Frontline will have chance to evade. Let's, let's buy a spell. So that's using that two gold after the fact. I've, I've gone and invested everything. I've got the best out of my units. I've leveled as high as I can at that point. Like, I can't get to another level. And what else can I do with that remaining two gold? I can buy a spell. Level eight, seven, Ross. Easy work for this squad. Easy work for this squad. All right, let's see if we can have another look at these stats. So I'm at level nine. There's only one person that's got a higher that it's sitting at level 10. So I'm actually on par with a lot of the, the remaining players. One of those players in the top four might be at 10 units. But I have put myself in the best possible uh, situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy the Fire Giant. I'm not going to buy the High End. I'm not going to buy Tidal Wave. Let's have a look at these. Units with the most health. Nah. Stun a random enemy and all enemies around it. That seems good. Let's spend four gold on that. So next turn we're going to spend four gold so that we can pop our Fire Giant into the battle. Let's put the Medusa. Ah. Jeez, my talking does me damage sometimes. You'll notice this lineup's very different. Bowkraut. What are you? You are level six, Sandro. So level 18, not an easy fight. But you'll notice that I've got all these synergies working together. And the more synergies you have working together, the better, the better positioned you are to, to take on your opponent. Now, there are also two other panels there which go through how many of each unit's been purchased. Uh, so you can see what people are trying to buy. Uh, it's probably not the most helpful information. It's probably not the most helpful information out there, given... All right, let's see what we get. So there's a Lich. Let's spin again, because we, we want to triple as much as we can, right? All right, so that behemoth... All right, we're going to invest our gold in what we can. We're at maximum level now, so we need to spend gold. So let's spend our gold on on dealing with um, spells. Let's hope our healing gets us over the line here. I think we could be in trouble. Level five, Catherine. So the the stats aren't the thing. She, Berlex has got full Sylvan synergy. Let's see how this runs. The Medusa has stopped the Green Dragon. Okay, a draw. Two very, very evenly matched opponents. Now the question is, at the late game, do I change my positioning? I'm going to take that. I am going to buy the Stun Foes. We'll buy the Tidal Wave. We'll buy another spell. Okay. So we can triple our Behemoth. We can triple our Green Dragon. We've still got two lives in hand, so we can do this next turn. These are all factors that you need to consider when we're looking at economy. So this is, this is an example of you leave that shop there, you accept the fact that we have to spend money next turn, but we've put ourselves in a good position. Uh, obviously, Burlex has got a lot more dangerous synergy, and that tidal wave is doing some serious damage. So it's going to be interesting to see how we position ourselves next turn. That's our opponents come up with a very, very strong composition. Uh, whereas I guess I've been fluffing around a fair bit. But you can see the, the benefits. I hope you can see the benefits. Uh, trial and error. We're breaking eggs. We're making omelettes. 
Now, more units than my opponent. Not worried. Well, I can't buy the extra, the tidal wave, but I can buy retribution. 1.5 seconds seems like a good amount. Let's move things around a little bit. Let's see how this works. Probably should move the Mudo, to be honest. But anyway, let's see if this fight ends up a little bit closer. Okay, so by making a couple of tweaks, by, by leveling up my monsters, we have succeeded. And you notice that making those... Uh, oh, I've got Untamed as well, so... Maybe that Sephiroth ability, that hero power is going to come to the forefront now. Alright, so we've got 10 gold to spend. The question is, do we roll for a Lamassu or do we get a Tidal Wave? I'm, I'm voting in favour of rolling to triple... There we go. So we're going to sell the Fire Giant to get the triple Lamassu. And we're going to buy the last spell just so we're investing all of our gold. Now he's got synergies all over the place. Our, our ability is about to kick in, which is untamed. Let's see if our evasion can get us over the line. I don't think it will. I feel like his synergies are going to overwhelm us with that healing ability. Let's see if the evasion gets us there. And there's an example of a hero power getting us over the line into first. That was an interesting game to teach you all with. I, I, I hope you got some takeaways with the way we leveled up. Not every game goes like that. Not every game goes like that. Look, that is an interesting example and you can see that by having early synergies and utilizing those heroes early, it got me to the late game. We bought some spells in the late game once we'd spent all our gold and got up to that maximum level, made some adjust adjustments, and made the decision to focus on leveling up units in the late game, as well as choosing a hero that, while may not have had synergy did have an amazing hero power that actually got us over the line. We were down to 10% health, and that untamed ability actually got us there. So I guess there's a bit of everything, taking all of those principles that I've just gone through and and, and shown you guys in a, a, a sort of live run-through. I hope that, that, uh, hope that shows you the economy side of the game. Uh, basically, higher level makes, means more units. Higher level also gives you a higher chance of getting those epic and legendary units. Now, you get that one tick every turn, so finishing a turn one tick away means you'll start the next turn and can spin the shop straight away on a full level. Uh, so there are different ways to level. Tripling units, obviously, was, was the good way as I built through the composition. Changing tactics with what synergies I was going with. There was a lot there. And we also had a quick look at the data between the rounds. You're not always going to be able to go through it thoroughly. But you'll notice I look at things like what level the other players are at. I look at how many synergies players have active. I look at the the number of two-star units. So those that first column, that second column, and that last column in the first pane actually gives you quite a bit of information as to where you're positioned as far as how many two-star units you've got. It doesn't say what the rarity is, but it also, the other panels tells you more information about how many of each unit have been purchased from the shop. Now, in a 100-player battle, there are going to be a lot of units, So, but you can see if dryads are being picked predominantly in the first few rounds, you know what you might be coming up against or what people are looking to build. Obviously, you don't see until you, you hover over your opponent, but there's lots of data there. Don't be afraid to explore it. Don't be afraid to try different things. They're the big three things. That is 
Might and Magic Chess Royale. Let's break some eggs. Let's make some omelets. Let's learn through playing. Experiment. My biggest advice here is experiment. Just to recap, key area number one, understand your units. Understand what different unit types do. How to how to best position them to maximize their effectiveness. Sometimes you can put someone out of position and it strengthens you. I've used the example of putting a tank in the back row just to protect your ranged units. Uh, what else? Understand the roles that they play. Understand synergy. And that leads into key area number two. Heroes and synergies, much more important than most people think. Your level dictates the opponents you're gonna play Expect to match up against other opponents that are a level or two higher than your heroes. That way, that way you need to focus on your synergies to make sure you build the best composition to get over those statistically higher heroes. Uh, make sure you look for special buffs for your units, have buy units that work well with the heroes you've selected. Uh, make sure you're aware of battle powers. Sephiroth, very, very good example in that last game, uh, but not the only example. Some heroes have some amazing abilities and have some absolute rubbish units that go with them. But the payoff is late game and amazing battle power can save you as you would have just seen. What else have we got here? We go from synergies and battle powers to, well, actually synergies. Be aware of your your usage, be aware of your what powers and what synergies work well together as you're building a composition. And finally, economy and leveling. Do not spend your gold unnecessarily. It's best to time your leveling when it's most economical. Remember, you do get a tick up on XP every turn. Use that to your advantage. Be a tick away if you're planning on re-rolling the shop. If you don't have units available when you're about to level, maybe it's time to stay on that level for an extra turn and find the units you want. And by all means, please do not overspend rolling unless you can afford to and your composition is already set. Extra gold, extra gold should be saved until after you're at max level. That's when you should be exploring the likes of big end game spells to really finish off your composition rather than spending money on spells instead of, say, tripling a unit or re-rolling the shop to strengthen your lineup. And bonus, bonus tip, have a look at the data between rounds, see where you're at, see if everybody's scaling up at the same rate, see if you're ahead on synergies, see if you're behind on synergies, see how many people in the lobby have as many two-star units as yourself, explore the game, and and have fun doing it. Uh, you're not gonna win every game. Not every game's gonna play out like that last one I played. You're gonna have times where you lose all three in a row, and the best part about that is you get to ask why. Why did that happen? Were the heroes too big? Did I not pick the right units? Did I not have a synergy active? There's so many factors, and you're gonna lose games. You're gonna win games. You are going to have an amazing time with Chess Royale. I hope everybody has learned something and taken something away from my, my beginner's guide. Hope I haven't confused you further. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear what you guys think about Chess Royale and your new player ex experience in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching. And as I said earlier, you can check me out live on Twitch. It's ads7281 on Twitch TV with uh, Chess Royale matches every week. I also upload my highlights to YouTube, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button here if you'd like to see some of my game highlights where I put all into place everything I've just gone through. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I've had a lot of fun playing and teaching you guys. If you do have any questions, pop them into the comments section down below and I will see you next time.